Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of GLP's 10 out of 10. Um, it's actually quite tricky to know where to start introducing our, our 10 out of 10 guests this week. Uh, American lighting designer Ken Billington is a Los Angeles Drama Critics Award winner, a Boston Drama Critics Award winner, an Outer Circle Critics Award winner, a Drama Desk Award winner, and a Tony Award winner for his theatrical work. He's won the IES Lumen Award for his architectural work, an ACE Award for his television work, and been named an LDI Lighting Designer of the Year, amongst others. He also has his own Wikipedia page. Ken's successful career has spanned more than five decades so far as a lighting designer across multiple disciplines, including theater, television, architectural, opera, dance, themed entertainment, corporate and industrial shows, again, to name just a few. Uh, to try and pick out a few highlights is, is not an easy thing, but to have a go at that, Ken has had almost 100 Broadway shows, short lighting credits up to his name. Uh, for 27 years, Ken was responsible for the lighting of the Easter show and the world-renowned Rockettes Christmas Spectacular at Radio City Music Hall in New York. He's had the opportunity to work with artists such as Patti Lapone, Liberace, Shirley MacLaine, Cheetah Rivera, Liza Minnelli, and Hugh Jackman. He's lit multiple ice shows, touring arenas across North America, and he's traveled the world professionally, particularly with his design for the hugely successful musical, Chicago. Welcome, Ken Billington. Well, thank you, and I'm tired listening to all that. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Our first question is, what, what was your first show as a designer? Um, well, my first show, um, the first thing I ever lit was 10 Little Indians for the Harrison Players. And I think I was in the um, ninth, eighth or ninth grade. Then my first off-Broadway professional show was a play called Fortune in Men's Eyes that uh, Sal Minio directed. And then my first Broadway show was a musical called Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope. Something you've never heard of. Uh, it was uh, a, a black review. So I'm sure over, over obviously your extensive career so far, um, there, there must have been, you know, a couple of times where it, it maybe just didn't quite go as well as it, uh, as it should have done. <laughs> Things didn't quite go to plan. So our second question is, do you have, you know, a moment that you're able to share where uh, everything looked to be so good and so great and then you, it just didn't work out? Yeah, well, there's a number of them, but the, the one I think that is most interesting is um, on the 10th anniversary performance of Chicago at the Ambassador Theater in New York. It was a gala evening. It was every star who had ever been in Chicago did a number or did a crossover, or did a scene. We had rehearsed it for two days. I'd relit it for the not really relit it, but it opened with Cheetah Rivera and then it went to somebody else. And it was everybody. It was as star-studded an event as you could do. Right. Um, and I'm sitting in my tuxedo in the middle of the auditorium, just as Melanie Griffith is about to walk on stage to do the Roxy monologue. And at that moment, a scroll snapped off the end of a of its a reel, and that motor keeps going. And I don't know. There may be young people here who don't know this. It goes. Yeah, that noise that will keep you awake. Uh, like that. <laughs> By the way, it dr could drown out a symphony orchestra. It is so loud. And Melody Griffiths is now trying to yell over this noise. So. <laughs> I get up, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm stepping over every celebrity in the world. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I hit the aisle, run up the aisle, cross the back of the auditorium, down the side through the pass door. And it was on the proscenium boom. I knew right where it was because my ear told me that. It told me that. So I go to the pass door, I said, turn it off. And the crew is like, we don't know where it is. We don't know, what do we do? And I said, oh, well. So I go out and I knew where the proscenium boom was. There was somebody sitting in a chair and I said, excuse me? <laughs> and Melanie Griffith has now stopped and the director has run down to the front row. And I, in my tuxedo, I climb up on the armrests of the guy's <laughs> chair and just pull the first DMX plug I could find and it all stopped to a round of applause, I must tell you. <laughs> so, 
That's it little, turned out okay, but it was a little frightening. That's, at the that's a great story. And you became you became the star of the show for. I became the star, and everybody knew who I was because there <laughs> I was standing up trying to reach. <laughs> So moving on from that, what's the best piece of advice uh, that anyone's ever given you, uh, professionally or otherwise? Right. Well, you know, uh, Saren Musser, we were talking once, and it was about uh, something. And she said, Ken, and it was about a job that I was taking that somebody else uh, was not going to be doing, who thought they were going to be doing the job. Right. And it was a very large event. And, and I called her and I said, uh, and I just called for advice. Mm. And I said, I, I felt awkward about it. And she said, Ken, when, when they don't want you, they don't want you. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And she said, if they don't want you, they will use the janitor before they're not coming back to you. They're going to go someplace else. As harsh as that might be, it's true. It's the, it's the reality of the situation. Yeah, the, the decision has already been made. The minds are already decided. So uh, again, you've, you, you've had a career that spans into, into decades and you've touched so many different uh, genres of lighting. What would you say, if you can pinpoint one, what would you say is your proudest achievement? so far. I will tell you exactly what my proudest achievement is as the um, 2019 uh, U.S. Uh, Knights of the Illumination Award. Some of the winners were Brandon Baker, mm -hmm. uh, Natasha Katz, yes. John Hustner, and Ben Piercy, and they all started their careers in my office. Oh, really? Wow. And they all won the same season, one for television, one for ballet, one for theater, and one for a video. Wow. And that, that was just made me feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I've done something good. <laughs> passed, on the, uh, passed on the baton and, and yeah. 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 What do you normally do in your, in your downtime? Um, downtime is rare, um, I must say. I force myself to take some time. <laughs> Uh, my idea of downtime is doing nothing. Okay. Um, and, and I mean nothing. Um, I mean, I may, you know, uh, paint a bookshelf or something, but I mean, um, I, my weekend house is near the beach in East Hampton, New York. Mm -hmm. I love the beach. Uh, if it isn't beach weather, I just love looking out my window, reading my book. So my downtime is, it's nothing exotic. It is relaxing, sleeping late, enjoying my life and um, doing nothing. Right. Truly Just, nothing. <laughs> That's great. Switching off completely. Turning it off. Hey, you've worked obviously around the world in so many different, uh, different places. Do you have a favorite venue? Uh, yeah, hands down in Radio City Music Hall. Right. Uh, which I think other people who have been on your program have uh, mentioned. Uh, but it's, uh, I went, started there in 1979 with, um, they did a production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the Disney uh, movie live on stage. Okay. And Radio City had never had an outside lighting designer. And it had always been all the shows there since it had opened in 32 had been lit by the um, house electrician. Okay. Uh, very well, by the way, it was a, a great setup. Hmm. But since they were doing a musical, they brought me in to um, light this musical and dealing with a very large, iconic theater that right. was on a, the first five scene preset board ever made with Theratron tubes, um, I started lighting uh, the shows there and did it for 27 years. I loved the crew. I loved the venue. I loved everything about it. And it was great. And right. it is by far my favorite theater in the world. Yeah, it, it is. As you mentioned, a few other people have said, it's an iconic venue. We, uh, we, 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 you know, have some of this, this, this lockdown going on still. Um, in terms of music, 
um, and let's just say you were, you know, you were going to be isolated. Is there, is there one artist or one particular record that you would always want to have with you to help relax? And now you're, everyone's going to think I'm odd and strange. I like quiet. Um, so there, uh, no, um, <laughs> and this comes about from my, a car I got in 1976, which I still have an MGB, which is a sports car, it didn't have a radio. And I drove that for about 10 years. So when I was in the car, there was nothing to listen to. Hmm. And then my next car was a CJ seven in 1985, which I just got rid of. And that had no radio. And then I would get home and I sort of got used to the quiet things. My favorite thing though to do is on a Saturday in New York is uh, to go to my drawing board and design a show on a Saturday. First of all, nobody bothers me, but I put the Metropolitan Opera broadcast on and I listen to that while I'm designing. Okay. Right. In my office is background music. I have the classical radio station. In now, if you were able to jump back and go and visit the teenage Ken Billington and offer one piece of advice to him, uh, what would that be? Well, it's a good piece of advice. And I, I learned it while I was a teenager, believe it or not. And it's, <laughs> um, it's shut up and listen. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and the, how I really came to that, and I, I taught myself that, and I, uh, I remember I was doing as an assistant on the Broadway show, The Birthday Party, a Harold Pinter play. Mm -hmm. I was assisting Theron Musser, and we all went to lunch. And at lunch was uh, Theron Musser, um, Harold Pinter, uh, uh, Alan Schneider, the director, William Rittman, the set designer, the producer, and myself. We all went to one of the theater hangouts for a, an hour lunch. Huh. And I thought I had a lot to add to this conversation. And I remember, I'm sitting there with Harold Pinter, come on, what did a 19 year old? <laughs> and uh, they were all talking about whatever they were talking about. And then I, decided it was time to add something to the conversation. And I said something totally 19 years old. And everybody turned, looked at me, nobody said anything. And then they immediately went back to their conversation. Right. And the lesson was shut up and listen. Right, that's great advice, that's great advice. Um, if you were able to sit down for a cup of coffee with, with anybody at all, somebody living, somebody dead, uh, and just spend a, a bit of time with them and have a great, great conversation. Who would that be? Lewis Hartman. Now you have no idea who Lewis Hartman was. Lewis Hartman invented lighting. He was David Belasco's uh, head electrician and lit all of his shows. He's the one who put a spotlight, he put a lens on a light. I mean, he invented stage lighting. Okay. Uh, and the, at the turn of the 20th century, I would just like to see that, how brilliant, I mean, he invented lighting. Right. You know? To tap into, tap yeah. into his mindset. No, that would be, that would be an interesting conversation. Yeah. And, and we're up to our, our 10th question, our, our last one, which is, which is kind of one of our fun questions. So in a few moments, you're going to get a call from the U.S. Olympic team. And they're going to call you up uh, for it's your time to compete for America in the Olympics. Now, it, it could be the summer games or the winter games. But the question is, what's the sport that they're going to call you off? Uh, volleyball. Volleyball. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I don't play it anymore because every time I played it recently, I seem to pull a lot of muscles. <laughs> but um, I was, uh, that's was my sport. I play on the beach all the time. I play in Central Park. I play in Riverside Park in New York pickup games. Right. I love, and I'm six foot five. So I was really good at dunking. And yeah. um, I love volleyball. I don't think I could do it anymore, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Volleyball it is. Okay. Ken, it's been fantastic talking to you. 
thank you. Thank you so much for finding the time to, to, to join us. Well, this has been fun. Absolutely brilliant to, uh, to hear you and to have you on in, in real person, as I say. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Obviously, we, we look forward to catching up in person as and when that, uh, that opportunity comes around. Well, we will do it sooner than later, let's hope. Let's hope so. Fingers crossed for that. Okay. Ken, thank you very much and see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.